There are three different types of starter engagement systems that can be used in vehicles. This Tech Tip video explains each system, including similarities, differences, and the types of applications where each one is typically used. The first starter engagement type is called Positive Shift. Let's look at a starter circuit to understand how it works. At the start, the key switch is open, and the pinion gear and starter are at rest. There is no current flowing through the circuit yet. When the key is turned on, the key switch closes and the current flows into the solenoid. There are two side-by-side -side coils in the solenoid, the pull-in and hold-in. During engagement, the coils function in parallel to produce the electromagnetic force that's required to pull the plunger back. As this happens, the pinion gear moves forward and hits the ring gear. This is called abutment. When the solenoid pulls the plunger all the way back, it makes contact between the B, or battery terminal, and the M, or motor terminal. The pinion gear is now meshed into the ring gear. However, if the gear teeth aren't aligned, then the jump spring compresses as the pinion gear begins to turn. This slight compression allows the pinion gear to find proper mesh with the ring gear and prevent milling. Now, the current is flowing to the motor and only through the hold-in coil. The pinion is in mesh and the jump spring is no longer compressed. The circuit is complete and full power is flowing through the motor, transmitting torque to the ring gear. Positive shift is most commonly used in automotives and small to medium diesel applications. It's a low cost option that generally has zero engagement milling or click no crank failures. Now let's look at the next starter engagement type, soft start. As you can see, with soft start, the starter circuit begins in a similar fashion, with the key switch open. However, in this system, there is no jump spring. When the key is turned on, the key switch closes. Current flows through both coils. Another key difference with soft start is that the pull-in coil is low resistance, so more current flows through that coil as a result. As current flows into the motor, it creates a low torque and the pinion begins to slowly rotate. As the coil continues to pull the plunger back, the slow rotation of the pinion allows it to find mesh with the ring gear. Keep in mind that the solenoid doesn't close until pinion is in mesh with ring gear. That's because if the solenoid closes before mesh occurs, the gear would spin too fast when it hit the ring gear, potentially causing damage to both gears. Soft start engagement systems are commonly used in medium to large diesel applications. With soft start, there's no engagement milling, and it has lower impact torque at engagement. All right, let's look at the final starter engagement type, indexing drive. Again, at the start, the key switch is open. The pull-in coil is not nearly as low resistance as it is in the soft start, so there is significantly less current that flows through the pull-in coil to the motor. In fact, the amount of current flowing through is not enough to turn the pinion. As the plunger pulls back and pushes the pinion toward the ring gear, the pinion has a unique feature that allows it to find mesh. When the pinion hits the ring gear, there is a spring within the pinion. It applies pressure and the pinion rotates to find mesh. It does this thanks to an inner helix spline. This spline allows the pinion to turn or index as the plunger moves the pinion gear forward. The pinion rotates until it finds proper mesh with the ring gear. With the plunger all the way back, the solenoid closes and there's full power to the motor. Indexing drive is similar to soft start in that the solenoid contacts can't close before the pinion is in mesh with the ring gear. Indexing drive is typically used with medium to large diesel off-highway applications. Like with soft start, there is no engagement milling and has lower impact torque at engagement. Want to learn more about the starters? Watch our tech tip video on starter basics or starter differences. For further diagnostics, troubleshooting, or other questions, contact the Technical Support Center. You can also visit us online.